Yes, hello, how are you? Very good, and you? Very, very good. I invite you to share your screen. Nice yes, setup, guys. Really nice setup. And let's go for 20 minutes of really, really rapid response to COVID-19 with APIs. Amazing. All right. Thanks. Can you see my screen right now? Yeah, we can see your screen. That's perfect. Very good. Thank you. So everyone, hello and uh, welcome uh, for this quick presentation. Thank you for being here with us. So my name is Sébastien Monchamp. I am the CTO uh, at BPI France for online banking and platform activities. And my name is Willy Rousseau, and I'm the CTO and co-founder of CPOS. We are going to spend 25 minutes together. During this time, we are going to tell you about, well, the crazy tech adventure we had in uh, 2020 uh, within BPI France in order to respond to the COVID crisis and help French companies. To do that, we will, we will go through the three phases we had this year. We will talk about the API-centric framework that we built, and we will conclude with the results we achieved so far and the mistakes we made. But first, a quick word about what is BPI France and what is CPOs. So BPI France is France's public investment bank. We have a very simple mission, which is to help strengthen the French economy and to help companies to grow. To do that, we provide loans and non-financial services to French companies. We also guarantee loans that have been provided by, by other private banks on the French market. Last but not least, we operate uh, a lot of uh, investment funds in which we invest directly into French companies, either startups, uh, mid cap or large cap. Uh, and uh, we also do coaching uh, to help the companies to grow. Just to give uh, also a quick word on CPOs, which is uh, the startup I co-founded. It's the fintech branch of the Theodore Group. And we're a group of uh, startups of tech and product experts. And we're basically trying to address uh, the whole digital market. Uh, you have a few logos of the, the startup in the group. Uh, Theodo addresses web. Uh, Paddock addresses cloud and DevOps. BAM mobile development, secret data. And uh, we are extremely grateful to have been helping BPI France through its challenges this year. Thank you, Woody. So let's talk a little bit about our crazy adventure. So as everybody knows, uh, COVID has been extremely violent to the global economy. In France, COVID stopped 10 years of continuous GDP growth in France. So we wiped out in less than a year, three years of GP GDP growth in France because of COVID. This is what is shown on the slide you are seeing right now. In addition to the GDP, we also wanted to show you and to highlight two interesting facts. Um, first, um, 2020 was all about fintechs growing and banks receding. And that's something you can see on the, on the left side of the slide. We, and our analysis on that is that tech capability has been a huge cause for this phenomenon because fintech were already really good at it. Second, 2020 saw also an explosion of uh, public spending. In addition to the figures you can see on the right, uh, you have to know that 327 billion euros have been provided to save the economy through state guarantees on loans and other indirect financial mechanisms. So those are two huge shifts that we've seen this year. Why are we talking to you about that? It's because BPI France is instrumental to the economic policy in France. It's very specific to France. So our resources at BPI France have been massively devoted to the emergency response to the crisis from the French government on the economic part. In order to succeed, as we discussed uh, previously, and as fintech seem to be very efficient in this new environment, BPI France has basically to become a fintech. So we are now in January 2020. The CEO of BPI France, Nicolas Dufourc, got a little more specific on the fintech vision. Our objective is to become a fintech with physical branches by 2023 and branches all around the country. After assessing the situation, we found out that our culture was not really fit to this challenge. So we basically redesigned it and shifted. 
as you can see, we let go almost 70% of the staff in my team. Uh, and we replace them with new people we, we, who were uh, uh, more compatible with our values. We also started to rebuild our online bank in the cloud from scratch, starting on uh, January the 10th, uh, with a native, lean and agile mindset. It was extremely important uh, to talk to you about that because it was a little bit before COVID, but it was instrumental to our success. So three months later, we are ma on March the 19th of 2020. France has just been fully confined. All the businesses are on their knees. Bruno Le Maire, the French Minister of Economy, calls at 4 p.m. Nicolas Dufour, the CEO of BPI France, and he asked Nicolas Dufour to build a platform delivering certificates, allowing any business in France to get a loan guaranteed by the French state, the French government, in any bank operating in France. So this is a massive, massive operation uh, involving billions of euros because 300 billions of euros were on the table uh, to do that. The deadline for this little platform is set five days later on March, 25, on March the 25th. So basically, we created a task force and we started to work right away. So we're both at this time very excited and also uh, uh, eager to see if we're going to be able to manage it. So during the night, we can't sleep and we work on the first design. Uh, so that the developers can start working right away uh, the next morning at 9 a.m. Uh, so we start coding and four days uh, before the deadline, uh, after starting to code, we, we start involving uh, security exper experts by starting a massive pen testing session. We involve 11 people over three days to, to pen test the app basically continuously. And those experts, some of them come from the French government for the for the French IT specialists. I'm talking about ANSI, so it's a, it's a big deal. And the pen testing took us three days, but we we couldn't afford to have obviously any vulnerability on the platform involving such amounts. So everything is going smoothly. We are uh, very speed up, a little bit tired, but it's okay. We are uh, we are right on time. And then we got a call from the French ministry. French minister again. He says, okay, guys, I'm very happy with the progress. Just a small little thing. The definitive name of the loan is going to be PGE. So it's um, uh, pre guarantee par l'État in French. Uh, uh, so, sorry, I, it's extremely difficult to translate it in English. Actually. And so he says that we look at our code and our infrastructure and there is a <laughs> a shitload uh, of stuff to transform in order to adapt to this new name. So that's okay, let's do it. So we do that. And as soon as we are finished with that, less than a day from the deadline, we start uh, load testing and we do our load testing for 3 million users simultaneously. The objective is to survive an ad that will uh, be aired on the 8 p.m. news spot, which is uh, in the French culture, extremely important. After five days and nights of basically coding frenzy, tons of pen testing, name change, and everything, we are live one minute before the deadline at 7.59 a.m. on Wednesday. So for each of, um, of these three phases, the first one being the burst of PGE, we, we wanted also to deep dive on a specific technical challenge that we faced. In PGE, what really mattered was security and scalability, which are the, the performance criteria you see on the, on the top left side of the, of the slide. And in order to do that, we, we, we looked at the architecture of the platform, which is on the, on the top right side, and we found a specific API and we realized that if we secured it and made it scalable, we had basically a solid strategy to make the whole app secure and scalable. So, so we knew this was our big focus and our big focus was an API. 
So this API was a post endpoint for creating the certificates that would allow companies to, to get the guarantee on the loan. And what it did is that it wrote data in most of the applications tables. It performed uh, authentication, authorization, and various business checks. Um, and so it was a matter of delivering it secured and scalable. So uh, on, on the bottom uh, on the bottom part of the slide, you can see how we delivered it. And it, it's what's magical when you have only five days to deliver something is that the urgency really triggers teamwork. I, I really mean teamwork. It's uh, it's amazing to to live it. And uh, the, the, the good metaphor I like is that I feel like our daily meetings at that time were a bit like the rebels planning the destruction of the Death Star and Star Wars. B basically, everyone knew exactly what to do. And when we and when to do it, which is what you see uh, on the on the bottom slide. So I, I, I don't know if uh, the rebels uh, worked on, on with uh, DevSecOps, but in our case, DevSecOps was key. Uh, developers designed the API while the ops built the infrastructure. We we did pretty much everything in parallel. As soon as the ops started designing and delivering uh, the load testing scripts. Uh, we we did we did that sorry we did that as soon as the api contracts were available and pen, pen testing began as soon as the first endpoint was delivered so we massively did, we did everything massively uh, in parallel and um, we 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 had a, a very uh, lean devsecops approach this good level of coordination allowed us to go live without pretty much worrying about scalability or security So that was the first phase. Let's talk about the second one now. We are on the 28th of March, three days after the go live on the PGE platform. So we are managing thousands of certificates requests on the PGE when we receive a call from Laurent Vauquier, who is the head of France's second largest region. So he explains to us that hundreds of businesses in his region won't fit the criteria for PGEs, and they need something else in addition. This is what they call the rebound rebond loans, uh, and we have three weeks to make that happen. There is just a tiny little thing about this request. To do rebound loans, we basically need a front-to-back banking platform completely automated because there is such a volume on very little loans that humans can do it. It would be too expensive. And we don't have one. So we decided to build one from scratch. Oh. The deadline is on April the 17th. And uh, as Sébastien said, we, it's not like we had a lot of time to, to create that from scratch. We had only three weeks. So again, design and delivery started right away. And after three weeks and eight APIs plugged into, uh, Rebond was born. We, uh, we automated basically all the decision engine, uh, consistency checks, KYC, risk analysis, and so on. Uh, and because of that, and because of all these features, it was not long before other regions requested to also use the platform, uh, namely uh, Valérie Pécresse, uh, the, who, who, who most of uh, the French people probably know in the room. Uh, for the Ile de France region called us and the flexibility of the platform allowed us to quickly add the region to the platform and then to refund this platform with more money uh, twice actually. Uh, today Rebond is still running. It has allowed other regions to use the platform and as you can see on the right side we have a, a lot of uh, other regions that are going to be integrated in 2021. So um, uh, more requests coming. So we, we basically are going to have half of the French regions on the platform by the beginning of 2021. So for Rebond, um, Rebond is an extremely complicated platform. Uh, there was a very tight deadline. So what we chose to do is to identify and use the best in class APIs to build the platform. Rebond made us look at things really with the open banking lens. So where did we look? We looked at, we look at fintech. There is no surprise, but great startups like Hubble for face matching, United Credit, allowed us to 
not to reinvent the wheel and to include uh, very efficient services directly uh, in the platform uh, with little pain and very little time. We look also at what we call the French stack, namely the public of government APIs that were extremely useful uh, in uh, fetching data, key data on the uh, French companies. We found that API.gov uh, services are uh, really, really very good services. There is a high level of quality on their end and there were paramount enablers to succeed at delivering robots. For, for, last but not least, uh, we, we, of course, we used uh, internal APIs uh, de already developed by BPA France IT. Uh, so this allowed us to access uh, the, the, the data uh, stored at BPI France and with access only to BPI France. So in total, we have uh, eight APIs which were orchestrated using a, a workflow engine, which we also call a BPM. And this allowed elegantly handling processes that required both automated steps, uh, which were usually powered by APIs, but also manual steps. For instance, accountants validated documents on a, on a user interface. And this, this, these uh, different steps took, took over uh, during several days. And our key learning here, uh, which is on the right side, is that um, APIs are not just things we plug into. They represent partnerships with other entities and teams. And partnerships need nurturing and monitoring to create great open banking powered applications. And we use, a, this is what you see here, we use a, a simple visual management to follow the quality of our partner APIs and to plan discussions, retrospectives or problem solving sessions, which are done with the partner. And this is very important because most people think that once you plug into an API, it's done. Well, it's not done. It's, it's really this work, this ongoing work that makes the quality of, a, of an open banking application. That was our second phase. Now, let's talk about the third one. So between March and May 2020, we delivered three platforms, one per month. And the thing is that we were copying the code base of the previous one to create the new one. And we basically found out that we couldn't keep with this for a very simple reason. Around May, we got six calls day after day asking for eight, eight, more, plat eight, eight more platforms. So um, we had to, to come up with, with something new, something scalable, something uh, that could be industri industrialized. So thankfully, when we started to build the new online bank in January, if you remember the beginning of the presentation, um, we did everything in microservices. So we, de we decided to take these microservices to enrich and refactor them and uh, to uh, create a, a common, com a common con code base, a common framework for online banking and platforms and be able to uh, deploy new platforms like Rebon or new online banks in a very quick pace. Our objective is to deploy a new one in two weeks. So our first try, so the, the, sorry, the name of this framework is Hypercube. Uh, our first try was actually done in 20 weeks instead of two, which is not as cool as what we expected, but we managed to release the first version uh, on October 14th with the treasury platform, one of the platform we were uh, talked, to, we, we were uh, uh, asked about on May. Um, so right now, succeeding of, on Hypercube is our, our main focus, and uh, we want to, to, to really uh, improve it in order to continue to deliver business value as a very, very uh, high rate. Um, another very interesting thing about this is uh, that during the summer, we officially created the eighth business line of BPI France, which is digital platform. We sold two platforms to external clients in 2020, uh, and we generated revenue on it. And uh, we plan to do uh, a little more revenue in the next years to come. To zoom in a bit uh, on uh, Hypercube's architecture, it's uh... 
it's a, it's a platform or a framework. We're actually not uh, quite sure how to call it. So if you have any idea, uh, please feel free to contact us. So we can brand it. Um, but it's a, it's a framework which includes all the learnings we had this year from PGE, Rebond, and the, and the various platforms we delivered. It's also centered around the workflow engine, which orchestrates uh, several business-bounded microservices. Some microservices are going to communi communicate uh, through APIs, mostly when we have synchronous one-to-one uh, -one communication. And others communicate through events, mostly when we have asynchronous needs or uh, fan-out interactions. Fan-out interactions being an interaction where an event is going to affect several services at the same time. Uh, Hypercube also generates specific financing user interfaces, which you see on the, on the top of the diagram. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this part includes a dynamic form front-end component, which is powered by shared Angular components. As in Rebond, Hypercube exploits various APIs of our ecosystem. We didn't want to, to reinvent them. An obvious step to go from open banking to embedded banking is to not only uh, provide financing applications and user interfaces, but also APIs as products. And all microservices APIs that we created are thus integrated on an API gateway, which you see on the left, and they will dis be displayed on a developer portal, uh, like the, the strategy that uh, BBVA, uh, BBVA uh, had in Spain, in a developer portal in 2021. Now, and I know that we are a little bit running out of time, we, we have a few uh, slides left. Let's talk a little bit about results. On PGE, we distributed more than 100 billion uh, certificates, 100 billion loans uh, through certificates. We generated almost 600,000 certificates, which means that uh, 600,000 French companies were saved by PGEs. Uh, we are also very happy that our net promoter score on this platform is of 72. Uh, 72. Uh, with more than uh, uh, 300, uh, 30, 000, sorry, 30 000 evaluations, uh, which is kind of cool, and we are, we are really happy about it. For Rebond on the credit side, uh, we, do, we distributed more than uh, 250 uh, million euros uh, of loans, worth of loans. Um, so in three months, we became the largest B2B fintech on the European market uh, with 6,500 uh, 6, uh, 6, uh, uh, contracts signed. On the tech, uh, on the tech side, uh, we have very encouraging results on Hypercube. We have, so we have nine microservices. We have 106 uh, front components in Angular. And uh, we have uh, 23 APIs so far in our framework. We aim to have a little less than that because you might be surprised by that, but we feel like APIs and open banking have been interpreted as having as much APIs as possible. For us, it's not the way. Uh, we believe quality should come first and we prefer to have less API of better quality. So we had cool results, but we also made a lot of mistakes. Some of them we want to share with you today. First, we sucked at scaling. We just sucked. So we scaled our staff, which is the easiest thing to do, but all the rest we didn't do. And we found out in September that we were in a very difficult situation and we lost three months because of it. So um, how to organize team? how to make sure each individual has the right condition to work. Is our code of good quality? All of these questions that you have to ask yourself during scaling, we knew, we knew because of our experience that we had to do it and we just didn't do it because we were so uh, pressured on delivering results. It was a very, very uh, bad mistake. Um, uh, so, we had some delays because of that. Huh? You, 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 we have to be completely clear. Uh, we, have, we had some delays in delivering some platforms because of this uh, error. Second, uh, the second mistake we made is that we simply thought building Hypercube, the framework, would be simpler. 
because building standalone platforms is a thing, but building a software that creates software is really another. Uh, a symptom of that uh, is that uh, of us under, uh, underestimating the complexity is uh, how we structured our teams. In October, we had eight feature teams delivering value to customers and zero uh, team focused on building components and enablers for those feature teams. So this was the, the big second mistake, which we've since started to adjust. And the last one, we wanted to talk about customer support. Also, we were obsessed with helping customers in theory. The way we structured the customer support teams tended to favor processes over customers. So we looked into uh, books and lean management to reverse the tendency, which uh, caused basically incidents to be reopened by customers or to be addressed with a, a long delay. A few lessons learned, and then we will uh, skip to uh, our uh, to to the Q and A session. Three lessons learned. First, culture is key. Culture is the basis of uh, what we did in 2020. Uh, it, everything does not work because you choose the the right uh, um, people, the right partners, whatever. It's it's really about a mindset. It's really about willingness to improve and uh, to work with uh, really empowered individuals in strong teams. Um, the second thing that we learned is that APIs are about building partnerships with the companies that are providing the APIs on, on, on the, an external scheme. It's not just about connecting them te technically. It's extremely important to monitor everything after you have connected the stuff. And there is money. There is money uh, behind it, so so it's very important to think about APIs as partnerships between two companies. Last but not least, embedded banking is very real. We started doing it with Rebond because with Rebond, it's the French regions that are providing loans, and they are not banks. So in their experience with the people living in the regions and the companies operating in their region, they provide loans through us which is completely embedded banking. And we strongly believe that is, it is a key trend for the next years. So that's all on our part. Thank you for your time and for listening to us. Uh, I don't know if we have time for some questions because we, we were a bit too long. I am very sorry about that, but we are happy to take questions if you have some. So thank you very much, Sebastian and, and Woody. Uh, you like the 25 minutes with Q and A where I've been consumed, but uh, it was it was worth the questions. So what I propose for people who have more questions, they can ask you directly in the chat, or we can have a specific either podcast or webinar about it because I think it's a great story and we'll be glad to feature it at APA Days if you accept. Uh, right? Uh, uh, yes, but we don't want uh, other speakers to to uh, to. Imp to make the delay for other speakers. Thank you, Woody. Thank you, Sebastian. Again, you a great story. You know, finally, the startup nation, right, uh, exists, right? Exactly. Building a platform in a few days and enabling and making revenues about it and building the biggest fintech in the, in Europe, at least on credit in a few months. Yeah, that's possible. What amazing job, uh, guys. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Enjoy the conference. Bye-bye, everyone. Yeah.